In the last session we discussed this silver coinage game. We will now again introduce this and study this game and what are the best moves and all some results that are there we will we will present them. So, let us introduce the game once again. So, the game is between two players each player in their turn has to announce a number of course, we are only looking at the natural numbers they announce a number when the in the next player's turn he cannot he or she cannot announce a number which number which can be expressed in terms of previously announced numbers. So, let us look at an example let us say a player in the round 1 let us say player 1 has chosen number 2. Then what happens is that the player 2 whatever he chooses it cannot be 2, it cannot be 4, cannot be 6, cannot be 8 or any of them this thing because 4 is nothing but 2 plus 2, 6 is nothing but 2 plus 2 plus 2 like wise. So, player 2 let us say he can announce maybe 7. Now, once player 2 announces 7 in the round 2 player 1 he can announce a number which is not there in 2, 4, 6, 8 like this and it should not be inside uh, this multiples of 7, 7, 14, 21 like this not only that it cannot be inside 2 plus 7, 4 plus 7, 6 plus 7 like this like that. So, in other words the number it cannot belongs to any number x into 2 plus y into 7 where x comma y are greater than or equal to 0. So, a player can only announce a number which is not a, a combination of the previously announced numbers. Okay. Now, what exactly is the interesting thing about it? For example, let us say if a player announces announces 1 every number is multiple of 1 and hence there is the other player the next player cannot make any move. That means, a player if a player announces 1 that means, the next player has no move no more moves. So, the game will not be interesting if we consider a normal play. So, this game is considered as a major play. That means, player to choose 1 is loser. That means, if a player to choose 1 is going to be a loser. In fact, if the players if he has no more moves to make other than 1 he is going to become a loser. So, we are considering a major play here. Now, the interesting thing is that how long does this continue? How long does this game continue? 
the very interesting fact here is that as long as we want why let us look at suppose the players can choose let us say 10,000 the one player can choose 10,000 and the next player can choose 9,900 and then the next player can choose 9,998 and it goes on. 3 to 1. So, here the length is 10,000. This is one possibility of this game tree and the length here is 10,000. Can this be bigger? The answer is in fact yes. So, let us look at this another possibility. So, for example, it can go 2 power 10,000, 2 power 9,909 and like this it can go, it can go to 2 cube, 2 square and then 2. Then after that we can actually look at the odd numbers. So, this is also one possible way of this thing. So, therefore, the length can be made anything. So, these are the games which we called as unboundedly unbounded. So, whatever one player chooses if we want to make the length of this game any number we can make it. So, therefore, this thing and at the start itself the game can have any number of moves. So, therefore, it is a kind of unboundedly unbounded. So, now but the question that comes is if this game is going to be like this why is this interesting? So, the interest is mainly because of the following result due to Sylvester what the Sylvester theorem says is that suppose take two numbers a b of we as I said we are in this thing and they are co prime they are relatively prime therefore the g c d of a b is 1 then A B minus A minus B is the largest integer not representable by X A plus Y by of course X comma Y greater than equals to 0. Okay. So, once you choose two numbers which are uh, relatively prime whose GCD is 1 then a b minus a minus b is the largest integer which cannot be representable by x a plus y b this thing. That means the length of this is going to be finite once you choose like this. So, this is basically a result due to Sylvester in fact this problem is a even is known as a Frobenius problem I will come to that later. But let us look at the proof of this result it is not very hard. So, let us see the proof of this fact. So, now the GCD of a b is 1. So, in our if we go back to our school mathematics we have proved the following result which says that there, there exists integers x 0 y 0 they are the integers they could be neg non negative as well as negative such that a x naught plus b y naught is equals to 1. So, this is uh, something that what we say this immediately 
implies for any n there exists x1, y1 in z such that a x1 plus b y1 is equals to n. So, whatever number n we choose there will be some corresponding x1 and y1 such that a x1 plus b y1 is equals to n. It is a simple it is x1 is nothing but n into x0 y0 is y1 is nothing but n into y0 then this will work. Now, what we want to show is that a b minus a minus b is the largest integer not representative. So, let us try this one. So, let n is bigger than a b minus a minus b that means to write it another way this is nothing but a minus 1 into b minus 1. So, this is a this thing take this one. So, now now look at the solutions of a x 1 plus b y 1 is equals to n. We already know that there are solution, but we can also write it take x to be ok let me not put here this x to be x 1 minus t b y to be y plus t a. If we do this one then what will happen is that a x plus b y is nothing but a x 1 minus t a b plus b y 1 plus t a b which is nothing but a x 1 plus b y 1 which is n. So, therefore, the, the solutions of a x plus b y is equals to n are x is equals to x 1 minus t b y is equals to y 1 plus t a. Okay. Now, let us look at the t. Let t be smallest such that y 1 plus t a is greater than equal to 0 because y 1 is positive a is positive. So, therefore, you look at the first t for which this is going to be greater than or equal to 0. So, of course, we do not know y 1 whether y 1 is a uh, non negative or not by definition if you look back y 1 is just a solution here we do not know it is just simply an integer therefore, we cannot say whether y 1 is negative or positive, but we can because we are adding a positive number. So, eventually this becomes a non negative and then look at the t which is smallest such that this happens. Okay. Such a t now exists now look at this one a into x 1 minus t b plus b into x 1 plus t a this is equals to n which is of course, by definition bigger than or equals to a minus 1 into b minus 1 because that is the this thing. So, t is smallest therefore, y 1 plus t a has to be less than or equals to a minus 1. If it is y 1 plus t a is not less than or equals to a minus 1 that means it is bigger than or equals to a then t can be made smaller, but t is the smallest. So, therefore, y 1 plus t a has to be less than or equals to a minus 1. So, now we use this fact therefore, what we now get is that a into x 1 minus t b is bigger than or equals to okay, there is a small typo here this is y 1. So, y 1 plus t a is less than equals to a minus 1. So, therefore, I use that here. So, this becomes a minus 1 into b minus 1 minus 
b into a minus 1 because b into y, y 1 plus t a is less than or equals to a minus 1 therefore b into y 1 plus t a is less than or equals to b into a minus 1. If I bring this b y plus t a to this side then minus of b y 1 plus t a that is using this inequality what we get is exactly this. Now if you simplify this fact what we get here is minus a plus 1. So let me rewrite here what we have got a into x1 minus tb is greater than equals to minus a plus 1. Now this immediately tells me that x1 minus tb is bigger than or equals to minus 1 plus 1 over a. Therefore, x1 minus tb is greater than or equals to 0. Because x1 minus tb is an integer, all of them are integers and minus 1 plus 1 over a, 1 over a is something bigger than minus 1, this is this is strictly greater than minus 1. Therefore, x1 minus tb has to be greater than or equals to 0. This immediately tells me that n is nothing but a into x1 minus tb plus b into y1 plus tb and this is x1 minus tb is greater than or equals to 0 and y1 plus tb is also greater than or equals to 0. Therefore, n is expressible as a combination of a and b. That means any number bigger than or equals to a minus 1 into b minus 1 can be written as a combination of a and b. Now the next part that uh, requires here is to show that a minus 1 into b minus 1 that is nothing but a b minus a minus b plus 1. So look at a b minus a minus b. This we want to show that this is not representable by A and B. If we prove that then what we can we say that AB minus A minus B is the largest integer not representable by A and B. So let us prove this fact. Suppose we go for a contradiction, suppose AB minus A minus B is nothing but AX plus by for some xy greater than equals to 0. Let us say this happens. Then what will happen here is that this is a multiple of A, this is a multiple of A. Therefore, when I divide by a what I will get is that minus b is congruent to b y mod a okay? because when I div a will divide these two numbers are same therefore this minus this is a multiple of a. So a b minus a minus b minus a x plus b y which is 0 is a multiple of A. But A B minus A is a multiple, A X is a multiple therefore minus B minus B Y is multiple of A therefore minus B is congruent to B Y mod A. Now A and B have are relatively coprime. So therefore the GCD of A B is 1 this immediately implies y is congruent to minus 1 mod a. So minus b is congruent to b y mod a and a and b are relatively prime and b is common here. Therefore, if GCD of a b is 1 then this is same as minus 1 congruent to y mod a that is exactly what is written here. In a similar fashion 
we can say that x is congruent to minus 1 mod b both are there. So, because y is congruent to mo minus 1 mod a what we can really say here is that y is bigger than or equals to a minus 1 because y is a non negative number. So, y plus 1 is a divisible by a if y plus 1 is divisible by a then y has to be at least a minus 1 it cannot be less than a minus 1. In a similar fashion this particular thing gives me that x is bigger than or equals to b minus 1. Now look at a x plus b y. So, a b are all positive numbers so therefore this is greater than or equals to a into b minus 1 plus b into a minus 1. If I rewrite this one what I have got here 2 a b minus a minus b. So, what we have got is that a x plus b y is bigger than or equals to 2 a b minus a minus b, but this is strictly greater than a b minus a minus b. This is a contradiction. because a x plus b y is nothing but a b minus a minus b that is the assumption that we have made. Therefore, what we got is it is strictly greater than therefore, it is a contradiction and hence a b minus a minus b cannot be represented by combinations of a and b. Okay. So, this proves the Sylvester theorem. As I said this is known as a Frobenius problem. In fact, the Frobenius problem asks for not just two numbers a comma b, but in general it asks for multiple numbers when you have a 1, a 2, a k some k numbers and then you would like to answer what is the largest number not representable by this a 1, a 2, a k. And in fact, this problem is very closely related with the, the theory of uh, numerical semi groups and of course, we will not go into those details we will only look at this we have only looked at this two case and this two case is proved by is proven by Sylvester and because of this Sylvester's result this game <laughs> is known as a silver coinage. Okay. Now, in fact, uh, for the multiple case this problem is still open what is the largest number it is still there is no closed form available. So, in that sense this is a, an interesting problem to pursue further. Okay. Now, this theorem the Sil Sylvester's theorem tells us that this game once at some point of time if people choose two numbers which are relatively prime then the game will not go on long it will end in a finite time. But the question is once we know that this eventual this is going to stop in a finite time we need to understand who is going to win. But this is a, again a problem which is largely open. So, what we will see is that some examples where we can decisively conclude. But in general this problem is a open problem. Okay. So, let us say if a player one let us say announces two, if a player one announces two immediately the player two can announce three after that no more move available. except 1. Therefore, choosing choosing 2 is not good. Similarly, choosing 2, choosing 3 is also not good. That means, if I choose 3 you can choose 2 and the game ends. So, 
choosing 3 is not a good for me this thing. So, choosing 3 is a not a good option in a sense 2 and 3 if someone plays a 2 the other will play 3 and if someone plays 3 other will play 2. So, this is not a very good thing in that sense. So, okay. now let us look at another thing. So, let us say suppose player 1 plays 4. So, if player 1 plays 4, what if player 2 plays 5? What will happen to this one? So, let us write down some this thing, I will write down this way. Okay, because player 1 has played 4 and the other player has played 5, so 4 and 5 are already ruled out. So, in fact, so what happens is that the 0, 5, 10, this thing, these are these numbers are not possible. Similarly, 4, 9, 14, these are not possible. Similarly, 8, 13, these are not possible like this. All these numbers, we can see that they are not possible. Therefore, only thing that remains is 2, 3, 6, 7, 11. So, in 2, 3, 6, 7, what are the good choices to play? Of course, obviously I said choosing a 2 is not good for me. So, therefore, I would not like to choose 2. What if, if I choose 6? If I choose 6, let us look at it. Then player, other player can choose 7. Okay. If I choose 6, immediately the 11 is not 6 plus 5, 11, 11 will also become impossible to play. Therefore, 7 is there and after that I am forced to choose 2. Similarly, if I choose 7, once again if I choose 7, 7 plus 4 is 11, so 11 is not possible and in fact all the other numbers will also be impossible. So, therefore, the only possibility is choosing 6 maybe. So, in other words, so 6, 7 are also going to be a the choices. If I choose 7, the other player, he will choose 6. Okay, because instead of 6, if I choose 3 for example, then uh, instead of 7, instead of 6, is 3 a good, good choice? If, if the player chooses 3, then he will immediately lose because the other player chooses 2. So, therefore, 3 is not possible there. So, 6 is there and then again goes back to, so therefore, 7 is also not good. So, the only move then will be 11 choosing 11 is the best option. So, like this, this game one can proceed and look at what are the best moves possible. So, so this game apart from showing this small, small results, this game is in general largely open. In fact, it is not very clear what exactly are the best moves in this game. This is a, an open problem. In fact, the best place to look at about this game is the book by Burlkamp, Conway and Richard Guy. So, they have a book called Winning Ways. In fact, this is 4 volumes. So, this book has a detailed description about that and in that game, this game is a very interesting game which is completely different from a normal play. Okay. Now, once we have done with this one, the next thing that we would like to see here is that where we can go further. So, if we really look back in this last 9 sessions including this, we have been discussing mostly about impartial games. What about the partisan games? In fact, we have seen one partisan game which is uh, dominating. 
So, that is an example of a part, uh, partisan games, the partisan games play a different kind of difficulties and uh, in this course we will not discuss about this partisan game and instead we refer to this books, the four volume book winning ways for this thing. But the here one exercise would like to point out here is that in the domineering we have player 1 is playing horizontally and player 2 is playing vertically. Now the interesting question here that we can ask here is that suppose if the players if we, if we make it impartial in the sense that the players can either place either a horizontal or vertical then how does the game change. So this is an interesting exercise and, and with this exercise we will stop this combinatorial game theory then we will switch to the zero sum games, the classical game theory which I have introduced in the course introduction session. So, we will discuss about the zero sum games and then go on. Thank you, we will meet in the next session.